how do the chums to say, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, for you guys out there in the viewerverse, I've got a video for you about the new game modes inside of No Man's Sky that allow players that are returning players to catch back up and get back into enjoying No Man's Sky and the verse in general. So I figured I'd put together a best start user's guide for players jumping back in, because now we've got this feature where we can swap game mode on the fly. So there's a lot you can do with this game mode swapping activity in the first hour of play to negate the first hour of play. Okay, so hitting up on play game now, you're going to see a swathe of sort of new icons on saves. And you can actually rename your saves now. But normal mode has got like an atlas symbol. Relax mode has got like an aloe vera plant. Custom mode has got a cog. Permadev has got a skull. Whereas creative mode has got a spanner in the works. It has a doody doody. But we're going to be hitting up new game. And what I would strongly suggest is you use a creative save. Doesn't matter if you don't like creative mode, just hit creative, trust me on this, because this is going to skip the tutorial. Yeah, you're going to have a fixed ship, you're going to have all base parts, and you're going to have all the glyphs. So you can just hit on up a portal. So I'm going to show you how to find a portal in this, and then you can use Reddit and all sorts of other things. But we get towards that towards the end to find all the best multi tools and ships and all that sort of shenanigans. So yeah, stay tuned. Right, so here I am on the planet with a ship that's not on fire. Brilliant, excellente. So yes, if you've played this game, you would know all about how to fix your ship how to take off and all that sort of shenanigans. If you don't, I've got a video on how to stay alive in No Man's Sky. And I'll put a link in the top right corner. But if you hit on up the journey sort of milestone, you can see here you've got all the glyphs. You've also got all the base parts. Something you haven't got, sadly, is all the words learned, which is a bit of a shite. But yeah, here we go. Now, what I would suggest is taking it off and right from the word go as well, people you can call in the Nexus. So if you just want to jump straight in and start playing with some of your mates, you know, you, what you could do is call in the Nexus, get inside of the Nexus, swap to the game mode that they're playing in, whether they're in perma or normal or whatever, make sure your network settings are, are correct, join them in multiplayer, knock yourself out and have a bit of fun with your mates. So it's that quick to get straight into it and start playing with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking crazy, isn't it? Yeah, no bumbling about, no worrying about fixing your ship. You've got a fixed ship. There you go. Then you can play with your mates straight off the off. Or if you're playing like I am right now and it's the weekend, you can hit on up the weekend mission. Keep it in creative mode. You can run this super darn freaking quick. Lovely jubbly. Oh, and what you've also got is all the freaking blueprints inside of the game as well. So, and you can build all the technology. But you've got all that unlocked too. So you don't have to worry about getting a load of nanites or a load of salvaged data to dig up half a planet to get all your base parts. And you've got all the blueprints. So if you wanted to, you can start crafting yourself some real high-end sort of stuff and yet that you can sell and get freaking unit rich. If you had a load of units before and you just want to start all over again with a load of units, buy all the best ships, yeah, just make yourself a load of stasis devices or something like that, or fusion igniters. Here you go, look, I'm flying towards the weekend mission right now, but I'm just going to go into here while I'm flying, and I'm going to go over and I'm going to create a load of stasis devices. Here you go. Now I'm just going to keep pressing square on that, boom, 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 to my heart's content until I think I've got enough stasis devices to sell and make myself a billionaire. <laughs> One billion dollars. Yeah, or a million, whatever Dr. Evil says. Yes, yeah, so that was my impression of him. Yeah, brilliant, wasn't it? I know, it was like being there. <laughs> awesome. Anyhow, there we go. Like, we're grafting a load of freaking stasis devices. We'll sell those when we go to the station, which we're going to do as soon as we've done this weekend mission. Don't worry. I'm not going to do the whole weekend mission. I'm going to cut it in a second and reconvene back inside of the old Nexus, and I'll be getting up that Quicksilver. So, yeah. But you can do this a weekend mission. Now, what you used to be able to do before, and I don't know whether it works now, but technically, after you've done this weekend mission, you've got your Quicksilver and you've made an autosave, you could start all over again with another one of these creative saves, fly up, buy a load of Quicksilver um, stuff after you've done the Quicksilver mission, 
yeah because apparently when you go back into this save when you go see the vendor it should have unlocked all the stuff that you've seen previously so you should be able to unlock all the low-end quicksilver stuff if you get what i mean yeah just by hitting up creative save after creative save rerunning the quicksilver mission collecting buying all the stuff that you can afford i mean you're not going to be able to afford some of the really expensive stuff but most of the stuff in here you can afford by doing that and then this one you could just get yourself the void egg you know and do the um, living ship quest pretty darn cool if it still works as you can see here some of the things are available but i've bought all this on all my other saves normally it used to carry over and you could buy all of this again on any save get it all for free it would just all say available but you can see here i've got to buy it all again that's weird because i've unlocked all this in my main legacy save all of that's unlocked so it should have unlocked it here that's how it used to work prior i think it's slightly bugged out so anyhow there you go i'm going to turn this in i'm going to get myself a load of quicksilver now normally on this you would have had to have fought sentinels and all sorts but because i'm still in creative mode didn't have to do that it was a walk in the park to get that like little quicksilver boost there also got a load of units not many Something to note is you've now got boosted slots. We'll touch on those boosted slots in a moment, but I'm just going to fly on over to the actual station. And uh, yeah, because flying over to the station, there's a few things inside of the station that you, 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 you need to do, really. Okay, so flying into the station. For the very first time, you're going to get a gnarly tune. You know what? I'm going to shut up and let you listen to the fanfare that you get as you're flying in. Okay, so now depending on how long ago it was that you played No Man's Sky, there is a scrap vendor here now. Now, he came around around Desolation Time, Halloween of about two years ago. And you can buy things off of him that are very Halloween-esque. Now, they usually cost tainted metal, but because I'm in creative mode, you can get it all for freaking free, mate. So knock yourself out, get buying all that stuffage. You might want to buy a couple of repair kits, because now you can actually take damage, depending on what mode you're in, to the actual modules. If your shields go down on your ships or your exosuit, you can actually take damage now on two modules inside of either or. So yes, just be aware of that. So yes, get a couple of repair kits. And if you jump to a few stations buy a few more get a get a stash of repair kits it's worth having them there for that sort of stuff if things bust anyhow as before you can hit up these in every single station that you jump to and also if you call in the nexus you can call in the nexus and go to the same sort of capsule over by Celine and unlock a slot so yes unlock a few slots up inside the stations take advantage of those these are my boosted slots I haven't got many modules in here so I'm just moving tech into those at the moment just because it does boost them quite a lot now to give me that little mini lift but you're much better to put s-class modules in there now if you do want s-class modules speak to the vendors and if you don't go down a page or on the final page you should find s-class modules now i'd highly suggest maybe getting the cold module protections because they're good for running derelicts but other than that i tend to go for x classes when it comes to my exosuits hazard protection because they usually boost multiple multiple things at the same time then i bolt on sentinel ones as well to make it a little bit more op but yeah i'm going to be buying the ship modules here now there's three different modules there so yeah i bought those and i'm going to be installing those into my ship and i'm going to show you how to then make it so the vendor will sell you more by doing little mini reload hacks anyhow there is a new terminal here as well depending on how long you've been playing or not been playing for i should say where you can actually upgrade your your um multi-tool so pretty cool now if you've managed to fill up all your slots it's probably because of the class so you need to up your class to an s class i'm going to take this all the way up to an s class because i'm in creative mode i'm not spending any nanites to do this otherwise it's going to freaking wipe you out when it comes to nanites to upgrade the class and it's going to wipe you out on units to put in additional slots but as you can see here in creative mode not a problem so just keep hammering it through until you've managed to get it up to an s class and then you want to install all of your slots and make your uh, multi-tool completely maxed now i quite like this beginning multi-tool because you can see there over at the side there's three boosted slots in a row so you can fully upgrade either a weapon or your mining beam or whatever now sadly i wasn't very lucky with my starting system and there was no s-class modules available for my multi-tool otherwise i would have gone to town i would have bought the s-class modules with this guy and with the ship guy and then every time i do a reload and install these modules 
it would be great. You can also see here, hold to confirm, I've put that to disabled. That's how I was hammering through installing all those slots. Otherwise you've got to hold down your button each time. It's a right pain in the neck. Yes, so now I'm going to upgrade my starter ship. And why am I upgrading my starter ship? Again, the boosted slots on the starter ship are nicely nestled together. So it gives you an awesome boost to one of your weapons, which we'll get to in a moment. I'm going to be installing that Positron Ejector and putting it over the free boosted slots to give myself quite a little lift when it comes to the damage potential of this ship, even though it's just the starting ship. Again, upgrade your class all the way to S class, so then you can install all of the slots that you want. Otherwise, it's going to sort of have a level cap. So b class will get you so far a class a little bit further s class you can install the maximum amount of slots so there we go i've got all those in and yes lovely in the way that it's all lined up i'm going to use the appearance modifier here to make myself look swanky to give myself a little bit of personalization but yeah knock yourselves out in here make yourself look awesome so this is this is great you get your look and feel and you get your setup right at the start before you start doing the story missions as you can see there i've got like a little message in the bottom right corner to start start the story but I'm not going to hit it up I'm purposely ignoring it until I'm ready I've just sold all of those stasis devices you can see there I've just capped out my freaking units I'm freaking mega rich so I can buy myself an awesome freighter now but to find an awesome freighter I'm probably going to use the coordinate exchange rather than just the normal ambient method of hopefully finding the one I want and um, doing the freighter shopping type sort of hacky type reloading and thing so yes you've done what I'm on about I put a video in the top right hand corner on how you can go freighter shopping using the coordinate exchange or um, the, yeah, the interstellar index there's multiple places you can go for this sort of stuff right now I've gone to see this cartographer and I'm just gonna buy every single type of map and I'm gonna max it out to the 99 I'm going to throw these into my sh my starship for now, but normally I'd scurry all these away inside some sort of storage vault on board my freighter because I've got a higher capacity for storing these things, so it doesn't take up so many slots. But it's quite handy to have all these charts after you've changed your game mode, so you can hit those up. I mean, you can install scanners on your exocrafts, but just for now, until you've got all your exocrafts, it's a great way of finding what you're after. So now I'm just going to go to town in upgrading my starship. Now I've put in the different types of scanner, the conflict scanner, the economy scanner. Very important to have if you want to find yourself a monolith, which will be hitting up in a moment. And then after we find the monolith, we're going to be able to hit ourselves up a portal. And it's from using the portal that you can go get yourself any ship you want in the game, any mortar tool you want in the game, any freighter you want in the game. I think you get the idea. <laughs> it's going to be freaking awesome. So yes, there we go. I'm just going to shuffle stuff around. I'm going to be installing things in and I'm just going to be reloading with this vendor and I'm just going to focus on those three different sorts of upgrades that I got so I've got a positron ejector I got a photon cannon and I got um the other one that fires out the purple gunk that I can't remember the name of at the moment the name eludes me people out there I've oh, got it the silentron ballista I say I got it I googled it mate <laughs> <laughs> oh, brain fart moment yeah freaking crazy well let's say i googled it i just moved the slider forwards and saw it after i've installed it so there we go we've got us <laughs> it's on cannon actually it's not the photon cannon at all is it it's a freaking phase beam it's a phase beam people oh my gosh <laughs> Well, you've been playing the game six years right okay cool so we've got that tech in you can see there i've already started to boost my positron ejector and uh, everything's going quite swimmingly i'm going to be installing in all the sort of launch thrusters now the launch thrusters you've got like a, a, an s class one that you get just on the tech tree which you should have because you've done it in creative mode and what that does is when you land on planets every time you take off it uses less fuel for takeoff so you don't have to use as much launch thruster fuel but i would suggest even though we're in creative mode is maybe crafting yourself a load of launch thruster fuel maybe some frigate fuel um, and other fuels like the hyperdrive stuff for traveling just so you've got all that in the bag you know but do that towards maybe the end before you swap into normal mode but at the moment i'm just installing all the different techs that i can right now and just making the ship functional so it moves a little bit like it's not stuck in bloody taffy because at the moment it hasn't really got a very good turn circle and it's a little bit shite so i'm just going to go to town just going to install all the technology that i can at the moment and then i'm going to be doing reloads and reinstalling some of the tech that the actual vendor sold to me for um you know the nanites that i got because i'm still in creative there we go i'm going to stick that there boom 
and uh, yeah I'm gonna bolt on those so that is the Silotron ejector yeah I think I stick it there and then I can nestle it together and get all the adjacency bonuses off of this so we go put that there chicka pow chicka boom that's in and that's pretty much where I am with these oh I can put in all the little mini boosts for these let's stick that one in and I can do the same for the phase beam and I can do the same for the positron ejector where are you phase beam there you are chicka boom chicka pow and uh, now we need to do this one so that one chicka -chicka -ing, chicka -chicka -ow. now you might not be lucky with what you know i got a load of s-class modules for those free weapons for the ship i'd say just roll with whatever you can get inside of here you might have a better multi-tool than me or you might have a completely weapon different weapon setup just go with what the first blinking station gives you as a little mini perk anyways at this point i've just jumped in my ship and out of my ship to create an auto save i'm gonna reload it Important announcement time, if you're liking what you're seeing with your eye peepers and hearing with your ear holes, then please like and subscribe and do all those sort of things. Right, well, I've relocated in. I can go and speak to that same vendor and buy the same modules again. It's in creative mode, so I say buy rather loosely. Anyhow, those maps that I picked up earlier, people, are freaking awesome for finding shizzle, including the new experimentally type royal multi-tools they're really quite cool you find them inside sentinel pillars using sentinel pillar maps they've got a chance to spawn one relatively low but if you jump over to the coordinate exchange and find an actual place to jump to you're good quids in hopefully you're going to get one there anyhow i'm installing these modules yet again and hopefully i've only got to do one more reload and yeah that's pretty much that done so jump in my ship out of my ship to create another autosave and then reload that autosave <laughs> already hit that like and subscribe you freaking awesome heck yes you are we'll share it with a friend send this around your friends who's got no man's sky <laughs> thanks so there you go yes people the reloading and rebuying the modules from vendors is still very much a thing inside of the waypoint update and it's a very good way of getting the kit that you want for the stuff that you want sadly like i say the exosuit vendor has no s-class modules i want and neither does the multi-tool vendor but this guy free weapons i think i lucked out when it comes to my ship Hope you had a better roll with your modules, people in the viewerverse. But you know, you can always jump to another station and do this again. It's just, I'm just going to roll with this with the first station I get. Add a little bit of random luck into the sort of stuff that I'm doing. But play how you want to play. That's what these settings are all about, aren't they, at the end of the day? Yeah, switch that switch back and forth as you see fit. It's like, I probably won't if I was to continue on with this save. I'll get all the way up to the end of this video where I do swap it back to normal and then I might even I might even lock it but then thinking about it there might be a new update that Hello Games put out there that's really freaking grindy and I know if you've got to lock your settings you're locked out for good so I don't know hit us up in the comments let us know will you ever lock your settings or have you already let us know in the comments sound off that'd be pretty darn interesting to see heck yes it would because i'm in two minds i don't think i will lock them just in case there is a really really grindy shitey update that adds a freaking load of hours in doing the same thing over and over again in just in case you know what i mean anyhow there we go i've used my economy scanner to find myself a trading post now i'm going to fly on down to the trading post you're briefing why do you need to go to a trading post well friends at a trading post you get quite a lot of ships landing on the landing pads which i was aiming for for whatever reason my ship just said no not doing that that's a landing pad i'm not made for landing pads you freaking are mate you freaking land there no i'm gonna land underneath fine right okay well anyway at a trading post you're gonna get these guys that land on the landing pads and you can talk to them and you can buy yourself some trinkets from them it's usually the top two wares that they've got i'm also going to buy some launch ruster fuel if they've got some for sale hello there have you got the things that i want off the trade brilliant and yes they've got the viking effigy so i'm going to buy those and buy three of them thank you and i'm going to buy the viking daggers thank you and i'm also going to buy your launch ship thruster fuels thank you Right, done and dusted. Don't need anything else. Could have bought the Pugnium. The Pugnium turns into nanites if you put it into a refiner. But there are easier ways to make nanites. I.e. go to an abandoned building, swap it to creative mode, smash little eggs, pick up the larval cores, creatures can't harm you, and then you can spin those into nanites. Oh, hook is gone. Yeah, 
probably the easiest way to make nanites now. If you want a legit way to make nanites, it's got a whole playlist on it. I put the playlist in the top right hand corner just so you don't have to go search for them. Yes, go and hit that up. Excellent Mondo. Awesome. I've also got playlists on units, but you know, if you've done this, you're already unit, unit rich. You can just swap it back into creative and make yourself a load more of those station, those stasis devices whenever you want, whenever you get low on funds. Brilliant. Anyway, right now, I'm now hitting up, trying to get myself a monolith. I'm alien artifact. I don't want that. So I'm using the purple map charts, the alien map charts to find myself a monolith because now I've bought those two purple trinkets, the Viking daggers and also the effigies. Hopefully when I go to a monolith, I'll be able to do the puzzle and then it should give me a secondary option to locate a portal. Are you a monolith? You are a monolith. Third time lucky. Three. Here's the magic number. Oh yeah, it is. Awesome. Right, okay, brilliant. We're going to be flying on over to that monolith and doing the puzzle and then hitting it up for a second time and being shown ourselves to a portal. We're going to be putting a base at the portal so we can get back to the portal anytime we want. We've already got all the freaking glyphs, mate. So all you need to do then is just hit on up. The old portal exchange, well, it's coordinate exchange or the interstellar index over on Facebook. So interstellar index is over on Reddit. I put a link in the video description to both so over on Reddit, you have yourself the coordinate exchange and over on Facebook, the interstellar index. Now, depending on which social platform you like the most. Yeah, awesome. So there we go. I'm going to be hitting up. Oh, fudging heck. I shouldn't have hit a knowledge stone. It's the first one I've touched. So it's going to go on for blinking ages. Yeah, you've learned a single word it's for Viking. You've learned the Viking for Viking. Brilliant. Awesome. I'll hit up a freaking other one. There is a third one around the back. We'll do that one later. Right. So here we go. This is the actual monolith itself, the center plinth. Talk to it you'd have to do a puzzle yeah just uh, answer the puzzle and then you should be able to interact with it a second time so yeah a lot of the time if you're going to be greedy you're probably going to lose so if it says about grabbing something don't just leave it be and hopefully you get rewarded i learned the atlas word for atlas look at me learning all these fantastically words right okay well i'm going to interact with it now and it's going to probably ask me for my effigy or the dagger it's asked for the dagger so we're going to give the dagger there you go have my dagger i think i've got quite a plethora of those daggers to be uh, yes, I've still got five. Right, oh, brilliant. Well, it took my dagger, and now it's going to show me to a monolith. It's got no, no monolith, a portal. There it is over there. Portal. That's the one that we want. That one there that looks like some sort of wizard's magic ball thing for telling the futures or whatever. The prediction balls. Crystal ball. That's what I was freaking trying to think of. Having lots of little brain farts today, people. Yes, haven't had my Weetabix. Right, well, let's take on off. Let's fly on over to the portal and hit that up, shall we? I'm going to activate it, but I'm not going to go through it because I haven't got any portal codes at the moment, no. Righto, well, we've arrived, located, landed, jumped out of my ship. There's the portal. Hello there, giant portal. Looks like something from Stargate, but probably better, actually. I do like Stargate, but this portal's got a number on it, hasn't it, really? Let's hit on up this base and let's claim this area of land. Now, when you build near to a portal, if anybody comes through the portal, they're not going to see your base. It doesn't render any bases that are within, so like, I think it's a 1,000 or 2,000 U's from a portal. So just keep that in mind. The only person that's going to be able to see your base is you unless they join your game and then they will see it at the portal otherwise they're not going to see it anyhow i'm going to build myself a little turtley base here it's quite a cute little thing i've done videos on how to make turtle bases in the past but it's fairly simple you just need to make a structure to where you're going to be placing the head of the actual turtle and then you can delete all the structures and then you can build the body and then you just stick stuff on the sides for legs it's really freaking easy apart from the um glass biodome now for whatever reason you can put the door on three sides but you can't put it on one side which is a real pain yeah so there we go let's put that there i'll speed up the footage shall i captain steve oh captain steve oh captain captain
Right now, so that's my base done, isn't it? Heck yes it is. Now I can just head on over to the base computer, give it a name, take a photo, upload my base, winner winner, chicken freaking dinner. So I'm just going to call this portal base and I think this is probably where I will be inclined to change it back to a normal mode and continue on because now I'm unit rich. I've got a fully upgraded ship, a fully upgraded multi-tool. Yes, I haven't put the technologies in, but at least I've got something to hunt for. Um, I need to get myself some nanites. I might do that by going to abandoned buildings and getting a load of those lava cores. Uh, and, and yeah, just do chuck myself into creative mode maybe to grab those since I haven't got my bolt caster really upgraded or anything right now for killing them. So yeah, and yeah, until then, just keep swapping it from normal to creative, normal to creative. Jobs are good. Yeah, I mean, you can leave it in normal and you could tweak some of the settings, but then it puts it in custom game mode. And I don't know whether you can join other people's games in custom game mode. I haven't done enough testing. A lot of people say, Captain Steve, why don't you just make things for free and just have it in a custom mode rather than keep setting it to creative? Well, if, it's at the top of the freaking list, isn't it? So just changing it to there is a lot easier than hunting for it in the bloody list and forgetting which ones you've changed. So I just change it to creative and change it back to normal. And at least it's a set game mode. So if people say, well, what, what game mode are you in? I can say, well, it's normal mode or it's creative mode or whatever. So yeah, that's, that's just me anyway. Anyway, here's the portal coordinate exchange. So here you go, people. I've hit on up the NMS coordinate exchange over on Reddit. Yes, join that group. It's pretty done, freaking awesome. I tend to put things on here relatively loosely. Not often, but after, yeah, often enough, I would say. But not 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 as much as others. Heck no. I mean, my first thing is making videos, isn't it? The Interstellar Index, awesome group of people over there as well. And the Interstellar Index, I'd say, has got probably more bases and base builds and shares of base builds, as well as ships and multi tours and things like that. I do like the fact that on here, when you search for something, though, you can put in multiple keywords. I know you can over on the Interstellar Index. I just find that this is a lot quicker when it comes back with search results. And I usually get more recent search results with inside of this as well, which kind of makes sense. Oh, look, there's one of my videos there. That's from freaking eons ago, though. But yes, what you're looking for is which galaxy these are in. Now, I put in Euclid to sort of strip out all the other galaxies. The starting universe you're in should be Euclid. OK, people. So, yeah, I often put that in my search terms. I usually go for colours. So I put in red and white because that's the sort of colours that I like going for. And Euclid is my search term. You can see here it's brought back all sorts, including the new solar sail ships, which you find predominantly, predominantly in pirate systems of space, people. So, yeah, there you go. There's loads of coordinates here, lots of portal codes that you can hit into that portal that you've just placed a base by and go and get yourself the multi-tool of your dreams, the ship of your dreams, and maybe even a freight and all that sort of shenanigans but there you go people at this point i would be inclined to swap my settings back i mean play as you want to play people in the universe i mean that's what hello games has given us inside of this feature haven't they so i'm just going to put it into a normal mode but i could have quite easily put it into relax mode in relax mode you're going to get quite a lot of resources so if you are digging something out the ground like copper you're going to get a load more copper for your dig and for your time so if you haven't got much time I would strongly suggest using relax mode. I'm thoroughly enjoying it and I don't see any difference in the way that it gives out the lore and rewards. It still feels fairly rewarding in relax mode. So yes, if you are pushed for time and uh, you're jumping back in, you want to reduce the grind even further, hit it into relax mode. Now at this point, I'll be selecting one of these primary missions, pushing on with the story so I get a little bit of a tutorial just to settle back in. But there you go, people. That's my best start guide for new players or players coming back. Goodbye, goodbye and goodbye again. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit a like and a subscribe. And I'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon and over on YouTube membership. Thanking you, backers. And if you want to support this channel, just don't skip the adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Or yeah, just stay with Captain Steve that little bit longer and hit something on this screen. There's merch here now too.